Okay, day everyone. All right, so we're on our second day about triangles. We have a lot of stuff to do today, so here's the list of all the pages and the numbers that we're going to be working on. So feel free to take a picture of that because we're going to be jumping around a lot. So we're going to do a little bit of review first. So let's go ahead and start on page two, number 22. So the first thing we want to do is plot those points. So where did I get that from? That's from right here. So we're plotting these three points and we get this picture. Now you want to uh, see what kind of triangle this is. Now there's a couple of different ways how to do this. One way is just to look at this. Now that's kind of dangerous. I'm just looking at it and I'm like, ah, I think it's this answer. I'm looking at that and they all look different. So to me that looks scaly. So that's an okay guess, but we can actually do better. Another thing that we can do is actually measure these sides. All right, so if I actually measure this by using just a scratch sheet of paper and measuring this, and I'm trying to be as exact as possible. So that's one side. Here is a second side from here to here. And then the third side is from here to here. Okay, now look at that. All of those distances were different. So I'm pretty sure that this is going to be scaling. All those distances found it uh, look different. But a third way in which is much safer is to actually do the Pythagorean theorem. So if we measure all these sides, so this right here, this is a four, and you always want to start at the dot and go towards the corner, one, two, three, four, five. So that's a four by five, so four squared by five squared. I'm just writing this down, and I'll, I'll put this on the other page here in a second. Then I measure this one right here. If I count the hops, that is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six by a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so that's a six squared by seven squared. Now, one of the most common mistakes is people going from the corner to the dot. And by going here, a lot of kids, I don't know why, but a lot of students stop right here. If you go from the dot to the corner, you'll be safer. So just be mindful of that. And then this one right here, that is one, two, three. Another mistake that a lot of people make is for whatever reason, they totally skip the axis line. The axis line is still a hop. So that's one, two, three. So that's three hops right there. And then from here, um, if you go from the corner to the dot, a lot of people stop early, especially if the right here, uh, because they're like, oh, I'm done with the red. Nope, always start the dot and go towards the corner. It's much safer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that was a three by 11. Okay, so we're gonna take those numbers that we just found and put it back on the original. So we said a four squared by five squared equals x squared. We have a six by seven, and we also have a three by 11. All right, so now we're gonna do Pythagorean theorem. The first one I'm gonna show a little extra work. So four squared, that is 16. 5 squared, that is 25, equals x squared. 16 plus 25 is 41. And we'll just that will be the square root of 41 equals x. So we have the square root of 41. But what you can really do is, uh, if you're really good at, with your calculator, and I'm just using a big calculator, so if you blink, you don't miss anything. All right, so we have 6 squared plus 7 squared. We pop out with 85. And you know in a second we're just going to square root it. So you could go that fast as well. So 3 squared plus seven, uh, 11 squared, and you get 130 is equal to x squared, and then you square both sides. All right, so I have the square root of 41, square root of 85, square root of 130. How many, uh, so if you look at your Hot Topics, based off of the sides, if you have no sides that are equal, that will be scaling. So that's scaling just like we thought it was in the beginning, but we were just double checking that that was correct. All right, so that's our warm up uh, for that one. Okay, now let's go ahead and go to the next question. Let's go to page four. So let's go to page four. So when you go to page four here, um, we're on page four and I want you guys to try number two. So you should pause, give that a try. Okay, so hopefully you paused. Um, if you didn't, that's okay. Uh, so we have this equal uh, lateral triangles. Now, what does that mean? That means all the sides are equal. 
So this, this, and this are equal. So that means we have a combination of a bunch of different options here. We could say these two are equal and solve, or these two are equal and solve, or these two are equal and solve. It doesn't matter which one you do. You're still going to get the same answer. So I'm going to do, so pick any two sides and set them equal. It doesn't matter which two sides you pick. So any two sides, set them equal, and then you solve. All right, so me personally, I'm going to do 12x minus 22 is equal to 7x plus 8, and I'm going to solve that. All right, let me zoom in a little bit. All right, so we're going to solve that. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, so that's uh, 5x minus 22 is equal to a positive 8. We're going to add 22 to both sides. We get 5x is equal to uh, 30. And then we are going to divide both sides by 5. And we get, um, oops, I do need to fix this really. I feel like you're doing something wrong. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to use this teachable moment. Now, this is going to be wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. I'm going to get that the answer is uh, x equals 6. Now, that looks really solid, right? But it's not because in a minute, I'm going to plug this back into the picture. And it's really important that I do that because I'm going to catch this mistake. Right here, 12 times 6 minus 22, I get 50. 10 times 6 minus 6. I get 54. Wait a minute. These are all supposed to be equal. Something happened. What was wrong? Oh, right here. I put 8 and it was supposed to be 18. So use that as a teachable moment there. So I did a typo. All right, so now we're going to fix this for real. We set these two equal to each other. We have 18. We So 18 plus 22 and we get 40. There we go. So 40 divided by 5 and we pop out with 8. All right, so now let's actually plug this in. So uh, after you find x, you always plug it back into the picture. So 12 times 8 minus 22, that's 74. 10 times 8 minus 6, that's 74. And 7 times 8 plus 18, and that's 74. All right, awesome. So we actually caught our mistake when you plug it back in. So that, so and I told you many times that as soon as you find x, you always plug it in for two reasons. One, to check yourself. And that's how I caught my mistake. It was just a simple little typo. And two, to be able to answer any question they had. And they asked, hey, what was x? And what were all the sides? So it was rs, st, and rt. And those answers were x was 8, sr, sorry, rs was 74, ST was 74, and RT was also 74. And that is the answer for number two. Awesome. Let's keep going. We're going to go to page 12. We're going to go to page 12. All right, so we're on page 12 here. Okay, so we're going to keep going here. Um, so we're on page 12, and we have this. All right, so we're on page 12. We have this, and it's... Uh, okay, we have uh, congruent triangles, right? And we have all these good ones and bad ones. And here are some rules. But to be a little more specific, let's go over these, uh, these down here at the bottom. Here's more specific rules uh, with explanations as to what they are. All right, so first of all, you want to label as you go. So label as you go. We're going to do our givens first. Now, after each given, you're going to do any extra information. So if I said midpoint, that means you're going to do a side equals a side. So if this is a midpoint, this is equal to this. So for example, right here, if I said D is a midpoint of A to C, so here's D, it's a midpoint of this line, so this side would be equal to this side. Another one is if you have angle bisector. If I said an angle bisector, that means we bisected an angle, an angle got cut in half, so that means angle equals angle. So over here, BD is the angle bisector of ABC. So B, angle B, that's the center letter, got cut in half. So this angle equals this angle. Just like what I had here, right here. 
this angle is equal to that angle because that's the bisect angle. If I say that you have parallel lines, that means in a second we're going to say angle equals angle. Here are your two best friends, alternate interior angles and corresponding angles. So here are the pictures of alternate interior. They're on alternate sides of the transversal, and they're both on the interior angles of the parallel lines. And here are corresponding angles where you basically just copy-paste. Here are some examples. Alternate interior, here's an example of alternate interior angles. And corresponding, it basically is a copy-paste from one parallel line to the other. Okay, perpendicular lines. If I say the lines are perpendicular, then in a second we're going to say an angle is equal to angle, and those both of those angles are going to be equal to 90. All right, so keep going. We're just trying to put this in your mind, let it simmer. So another one is, uh, so step four, if this is not enough information from up here, all the givens were not enough, then you're going to try reflexive, vertical, or possibly the third angle's theorem. Reflexive property, that would be a side equals a side. So uh, the green triangle and this yellow triangle, they share a side, and uh, you would just put a little notch in there, meaning that that side is equal to itself. Or here's another possibility it could look like. So both of these, they share a side, so you just mark it. Another possibility, angle equals the angle for reflexive property. You're not going to see this so much right now. You're going to probably see this when we do uh, similarity, but it's going to pop up later. So both of these triangles, if you separate them, they both share this top angle. So this angle is equal to this angle because they are the same angle. Okay, so reflexive property is one of the things that we try. That's going to be the most popular one. But there's also vertical angles. So these two angles are vertical, so they'll be equal to each other. And finally, third angle's theorem. So if these angles are equal and these second angles are equal, if they're both equal right there, you're going to have the same leftover in both triangles. So that means that this, the leftover angle, the leftover third angle, is going to be equal to the leftover third angle on the other one. And then now that you have all that information, you should be able to do uh, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg. And then after that, if you had to go a step further, once you prove the triangles are equal to triangles, all the extra corresponding parts are also congruent. Side equals to side, angle equals to angle, and that's called CPCTC, which stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So if the triangles are congruent, all the leftover parts are also congruent. Okay, so that was just a refresher. Let's actually do some problems, shall we? So we're on page 12. We're going to do numbers 1 through 4. Okay. So on number one, so on number one here, um, if I cover up one of these triangles and we just focus on just this one triangle, how many bits of information do you have? So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. That's a lot better. Okay, so we have two bits of information that say that they're equal to something else. So we have this angle is equal to this angle. Awesome. So we have these two angles are equal to each other. So, um, but we need three bits of information. We need at least three bits of information. All right, so we're going to say uh, we need something else. So we need to do reflexive properties. See, they share a side. So this right here would be equal to itself. Now you should have enough. All right, so now if you go around the triangle, what do you have more of, angles or sides? You have two angles and one side, so you have more angles. So you're going to start at the third angle you don't have. We're going to start here, and we're going to go in a circle. It doesn't matter which way you go. So if I go this way, you're going to call out either angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, or angle 90, or you're going to call out side 1, side 2, side 3. All right, so anytime I hit something marked equal, you're going to call that out. So nothing, nothing, boom. That's angle two, boom, that's angle uh, side one, and boom, angle one. All right, so what did we hit? By going in this direction, we said angle two, side one, angle one. Okay, now let's go around the other triangle. I'm going to use orange this time. So when I go around this one, I'm going to start at the third angle I don't have, go in a circle. I go this way, I go boom. Angle two, side one, angle one. All right, so I said angle two, side one, angle one. Okay, now 
First of all, are both of these exactly the same? Angle two, side one, angle one, yes they are. If they weren't, you would take one of them and completely flip it around and ask yourself that question again. Okay, are these exactly the same? Yes. Ask you ne your next question. Is ASA good or bad? Okay, so remember, the only bad ones are AAA and ASS. Those are the only bad ones. All these other combinations are good. So ASA is good. So this is a yes because of ASA. All right, let's try again. All right, so number two. Okay, on this triangle here, we only have two bits of information. That is not enough. So what are we going to try? Ooh, reflexive right here. So singles are already being used. Double is already being used. So I'm going to put triple. I'm going to put three. One is being used. Two is being used. I'm going to put one, two, three. Okay, now if I go around this triangle here, what do we have more of, angles or sides? Ooh, all of them are sides. Okay, so we're just going to go from the smallest to the largest. So if I cover this up, that would be side one. Then what's the next number? Side two, and then side three. So from smallest to largest. And over here, do the same thing. That's side one, side two, side three. Awesome. Okay, now first of all, are these exactly the same? Yes, they are. So that's good. Is, a, uh, is SSS good or bad? It is good. So this is yes, SSS. Now, I want to point out an example here for you for a second. Okay, very important. So just a quick little example of why we put these numbers on here. If I made a triangle, and this was single, single, double, double. Okay, so right here. So we have this. Oh, wait, we don't have enough information. So, oh, reflexive, one, two, three. And if you go around the triangle, and if you were not putting these numbers down, a lot of us would have gone, oh, look, side, side, side. And on this other one, that's also side, side, side. And is side, 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 SSS, is that good or bad? That's good. And a lot of us would have said that this was equal. However, I train you guys to make sure that you do the numbers. So let's try that one more time and re-ask ourselves that question. So, from smallest to greatest, what are these numbers? That's at side one, side one, side three. So one, one, three. Now do it on the other one as well. That would be side two, two, three. Now ask yourself, are these exactly the same? No, so this is not congruent. So it's very important to make sure that you put the numbers down that will catch a lot of mistakes. So that was just an extra example I wanted to point out to you guys. Okay, let's keep going. All right, number three. Number three, this has three bits of information. This has three bits of information. One, two, three, one, two, three, awesome. Let's go ahead and go around the triangle. What do you have more of, angles or sides? We have more angles. So we're gonna start at the third angle you don't have and now go in a circle. All right, let's see. If I go this way, that's side one, angle two, angle one. All right, so we have side one, angle two, angle one. All right, let's go around the other one. We have more angles, so go to the third angle you don't have, and now go in a circle. All right, so if I go this way, that is angle one, angle two, side one. All right, so let's see. Angle one, angle two, side one. First, are both of these exactly the same? Wait a minute, no, they're not. Oh, okay, maybe it's because I have, have one of these backwards. So I'm gonna just take this one and I'm gonna completely flip it around. That's side one, angle two, angle one. All right, so all I did was just flip it around. Now ask yourself the same thing. Are these exactly the same? Side one, angle two, angle one. Yes, they're exactly the same. Now ask yourself the next question. Is SAA good or bad? Remember, the only two bad ones are AAA and ASS. Those are the only bad ones right there. Oh, good. AAS is good. Or SAA. That's also good. All right, so we have, this is yes, and the reason was SAA, or you could have said 
S-A-A-S. Both are the same idea. All right, let's do one more problem. Okay, on this one, number four. Um, how many bits of information do we have? Well, we have two bits. We have a 90 degree angle and this side. Now, just because it's a 90 degree angle does not mean it's hypotenuse leg. Just pointing that out. Okay, so we don't have enough information. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. This right here, the reflexive property. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go around the triangle. So what do we have more of? Angles or sides? We have more sides. So start with the third side you don't have. Go in a circle. I get angle 90, side 1, side 2. All right, so angle 90, side 1, side 2. Okay, and over here, do the same thing. We have, start right here. We have angle 90, side 1, side 2. All right, let's see. Angle 90, side 1, side 2. Okay, are they exactly the same? 90, side 1, side 2? Yes, they are. Is ASS good or bad? Ooh, oh no. ASS is bad. ASS is bad. When is the only time you're allowed to have ASS? If you have a leg. So that would really be hypotenuse leg. And I get more specific on this bottom part. HL, ASS on a right triangle is okay. All right, so this is okay. This is really yes because of hypotenuse leg. All right, so that was number four. Okay, so now let's, that's our warm up. That's, uh, sorry, that was our mini lesson. So let's go ahead and go to page six. We're going to go to page six. So flipping back to page six. All right, so on page six here, on the very bottom of your hot topics, um, we've already touched this before. Um, a triangle angle sum theorem. All the angles add up to 180. Exterior angle theorem. The two angles add up to equal the outside of the third one. All right, so we're going to use these rules. All right, so right here, the triangle angle sum theorem. We know that A, B, and C add up to 180. In addition to that, we also know that angle 1 is equal to angle 2 plus angle 3. Fabulous. Okay, so... Number one. All right, so on number one, we know that three angles of a, of a triangle add up to 180. So we have angle one plus 24 plus 37 equals 180. Now, I'm just showing a little bit of work here, but really you can just do this on your calculator. So let me get my calculator here. Situate it just so. All right. Do, 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 do. All right, so we have 180, subtract that 24, subtract that 37, and we get 119. Now, I'm just showing a lot of work, so you can, I don't need to see this part. You can just, as long as you label your triangle, I personally am happy. Okay, let's go ahead and go down to number four. All right, so on number four here, we have to find all the angles. And I'm going to show some extra work here. All right, so to find this, we know that angle one plus these others, 66 and 84, add up to 180. All right, so 180 subtract 66 and 84, and we're left with 30. Okay, can we find angle two yet? Mm, nope, but we can find angle three. See, these two angles right here make a rainbow of a straight line. They're a linear pair. So I know that angle three plus 84 is going to be equal to 180. Because they make a straight line. So 180, subtract that 84, and we pop out with 96. Oh, great. Now we can find angle 2. We know angle 2, 96, and 43 equal 180. So 180, subtract that 96 and that 43, and we pop out with 41. As long as you're labeling the picture, I don't need to see all this, but we're just doing this for our notes today. All right, so we pop out with angle 1 is 30. Angle 2 is 41, and angle 3 was 96. Awesome. And let's keep going. All right, so now let's go down to, to number 6. All right, so 
before you even start, a very good thing to do would be anywhere you see a 90 degree angle, actually write 90. That will save you a lot of hassle. Okay, what can we find first? Well, angle one's really easy. I know angle one, 68 and 61 equal 180 degrees. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see everything I just wrote. <laughs> so 180 subtract 61 and 68, we pop out with 51. All right, and oh look, angle uh, two and 61, what kind of angles are these? Those are vertical angles. So I know that angle two is equal to 61 because they are uh, because they are vertical. So let's go and put 61 right there. And finally, angle three, I know that angle three, 90, and that 61 are gonna add up to 180 because they make a triangle. So 180 subtract that 61 and that 90, and you pop out with 29. And what was your last step is the answer to their question. Angle one was 51, angle two was 61, and angle three was 29. All right, let's just breezing right through this. Okay, let's keep going. We're gonna go to page seven. So we're gonna go to page seven now. So page seven, and we're gonna do number eight. All right, so on page seven, number eight. All right, let me zoom in here. Calculator. Let's see. They're right there. Perfect. Okay, so what can we find first? Well, I can definitely find angle one. I know that these three are going to add up to 180 degrees. So 180, 75, and that 41. I will be left over with 64. Oh, look, there's a 90 degree angle. Let's put 90 right there. Ooh, I can find angle three. 180 minus the 90 and the 54, and I'll be left with 36. And then finally, how do I find angle two? Well, here's this dot, right? Here's that vertex. These three angles in this case are gonna make a straight line. So all three of them have to make 180 degrees. So 180 subtract that 64 and that 90. What's left over in that straight line? That would be 26. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put our answers in there. Angle one was 64, angle two was 26, and angle three was 36. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so now let's go ahead and do number eight, or number 10. So number 10, now this one's gonna get a little interesting here. So we're on number 10, and there's my calculator. Okay, let's see. Now here's a 90 degree angle, that's 90. Ooh, all of this is 90, but it got cut. So if all this is 90, and this part was 54, uh, 52, what would be left over? So 90 minus 52. And I get 38. Now here's the thing. A lot of us have been dealing with the number 180. So some of us might have accidentally gone 180, subtract that 52. But when I try to write 128 in here, I would have caught my mistake. I'm like, whoa, that's way too small to be 128. Oh, I did 180. Okay, let's try this again. So it's supposed to be 90 minus 52. All right, so always put it back in the picture. That will help you catch mistakes. Let's see, what else can we find? Um, well, all of this is 90, but I don't know either of those yet. Oh, but I can find one. I know that these three angles are going to add up to 180, right? So 180, subtract the 86, and subtract the 38, and I'll be left with 56. So this angle is 56. If I know the whole thing was 90, what would be left over right here? Well, 90, see, I almost typed in 180 again, 90 minus the 56 this angle right here would be 34, and that looks legit. So that's 34. What else can we find? Well, we can find angle three. These three add up to 180 degrees. So this triangle right here, so 180, subtract the 90, subtract the 52, and we'd be left with 38. And I know that these two angles right here are gonna make 90 degrees. So if we have 90, subtract the 38, I know angle two would be 52. Okay, now how can we find angle four? Now angle four, we can find it two ways. One is these three angles add up to 180 degrees or 
angle 86 and angle 4 are going to make 180 degrees. So you choose. So 180 minus the 84, and you get 96. Or 180 minus the 34 and the 52, because they, uh, they make a triangle. Oops, typo. And that's why you always double check. So uh, 180 minus 86 and 180 minus the 34 and the 52. And look, we got the same answer this time. So that's 94 right there. All right, so now let's go ahead and double check our answers. Let's put them in there. Angle one was 34. Angle two was 52. Angle three was 38. Angle four, where'd it go? 94. Angle five is 56. And angle six is 38. Okay, now what was another reason? This was a little hard. One of the main reasons that this was difficult was because it was so small on my paper. So if you do not like how this looks, before you start, we could have redrawn this very large and we would have had a much easier time figuring out what each angle was and we'd have a lot more room to play with. So that would be a good suggestion of something to do in the future. All right, let's go ahead and go down to number 12. All right, number 12. All we have are these angles. And it says go find X. Did they say anything about these being equal? They did not. So, but we do know that D plus E plus F is all equal to 180. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm just going to add all these together. So I can find all my X's. That is 5X plus 9X plus 11X and we get 25, so 25x. And now let's add all the constants. That's negative two plus three plus a negative 21. And we pop out with negative 20. So negative 20 is equal to 180. So all we did was add all those together, right? Add up all the x's, add up all the constants, and we pop out with this. Okay, so now we're just gonna solve. So 180, we're going to add 20 to both sides. We get 25x is equal to 200. Divide by 25, you get x equals 8. And once you get x, once you get x, what are you supposed to do? We always plug it back into the picture for two reasons. One, to double check ourselves, and two, to answer any questions they ask. So if I plug that back in, 9 times 8 plus 3, I get 75. 5 times 8 minus 2, you get 38. And 11 times 8 minus 21, and we pop out with 67. And all of these are supposed to add up to 180. So let's double check. 38 plus 75 plus 67. Yes, they add up to 180. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, so now let's just write down our final answers. Oh, look, we're ready to answer whatever they ask. X is 8, D is 38, E is 75, and F is 67. And we were able to answer that real quick. Okay, we're going to skip number 13 for now, and we're going to go ahead and go down to number 14. All right, number 14, we know that these angles, that these two angles add up to equal the outside of this angle. So we have A plus B equals the outside of C. So 13x minus 11 plus 4x plus 1 is equal to the outside 18x minus 15. All right, 13 plus 4 is 17x. Negative 11 plus 1, that is a minus 10, is equal to 18x minus 15. We're going to subtract 18x from both sides. We get negative 1x minus 10 is equal to negative 15. Add 10. Oops, I ran out of room, so I'll put it up here. Negative 1x is equal to a negative 5. Divide by negative 1, and x equals 5. x equals a positive 5. Once you find x, you always plug it back into the picture. So let's plug that back into the picture. We have... 13 times 5 
minus 11, we get 54. 4 times 5 plus 1, and we get 21. And up here, 18 times 5 minus 15, and we get 75. All right. Make that more like a sediment. There we go. Okay. Ooh, what is a tricky little bugger going to do? I would totally ask for this angle over here. Now, there's two ways to find this. These three angles add up to 180, or these two angles add up to 180. And we'd still get the answer as 105 right there. All right, so let me zoom out here. All right. So they're going to ask us a couple of questions. First of all, they said, hey, what's X? And what was X? We said it was 5. Then they said C, A, B. What was the center letter? A. And what was angle A? That was 54. A, B, C. What was the center letter? That's B. What was the angle B? That was 21. And then it gets interesting. They said, hey, what is A, C, B? A, C, B. I'm going to do this in yellow. It's at angle C. But I have two options. I either have 105 or 75. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. So uh, one of uh, A, C, B is this right here. From yellow to yellow at letter C, what was the angle? Was it 105 or was it 75? It was 105. 105 is between these two yellows. So that is 105. Okay, let's do the last one here. Okay, I'll make that orange. They said angle C, because that's the center letter. They said D, C, B. So on orange, so at letter C, from orange to orange, what is that number? That number was 75. Fabulous. That was number 14. Okay, let's keep going. Go to page 8. We're going to go to page 8. On page 8, Number eight. So page eight, number eight. We're going to make a triangle here. That's not done. All right. So we have a triangle. I'm just going to make a generic triangle. I don't know what sides are equal. I don't know anything yet. I'm just making a normal triangle. Do not trust the picture. I have no idea what, what it's supposed to look like when I drew it. Okay. P, Q, R. So P, Q, R. Then they said angle P was x minus 12, q is 5x minus 27, and r is 2x plus 3. And they didn't say anything else about stuff being equal. So all we have to do is these angles, p plus q plus r equals 180. So all we have to do is add these together, right? So let me move this up a little bit. Do this in my calculator. All right, so we have uh, we have 1x plus 5x plus 2x, and we get 8x. Okay, let's add all of our constants. Negative 12 plus that negative 27 plus that positive 3, and we get negative 36 is equal to 180. And now all you have to do is solve. So I'll let you guys finish that. You guys can do that one on your own. You would solve for x, plug it back in, and answer all their questions. Okay, and I'm just, uh, the biggest thing that we were trying to work on is how do you set it up, and that's what we're working on right there. All right, awesome. All right, and then now, now let's go down to number nine. So that's your job to finish that one. All right, number nine, we're going to make a generic triangle again. Not quite sure what it looks like. This is A, B, and C. They said A is 6 less. What does 6 less mean? That means minus 6. Then 7 times X. So minus 6, 7 times X. That's 7X. So we have 7X minus 6. B is 5 less than, so that's minus 5. 5 less than 3 times X, so 3X. So that's 3X minus 5. And then C is 5 less than, that's minus 5 again, 4 times x, so 4x. All right, so that was just the hardest part. Now just do your normal thing. 
we know that A plus B plus C equals 180. All right, so with my calculator, we have 7 plus 3 plus 4. So we have 14 X's. And we have negative 6 minus 5 and a minus 5. And we get a negative 16. So minus 16 is equal to 180. And you would just solve like normal. So that's your job to finish that problem. And you're good to go. All right, we're almost done, guys. Let's go to page 13. So we're going to page 13 now. Page 13. So on page 13 here, we have congruent triangles. Triangles with the same shape and size. This means all the corresponding parts. All the corresponding parts, such as angles and sides, are congruent. So congruency statements. So what's awesome about this is, uh, see, we have a single angle that will match up with a single angle over here. So angle one matches up with angle one over here. So A matches up with B. So A and D are matched up. Angle two matches up with angle two. So B would match up with E and B and E would be in the same position. And angle three would match up with this angle three. So C and F. So if we go a little further here, if I said that you had triangle B, A, C, what would that be congruent to? Well, if I give you a triangle, you have to give me back a triangle. B was the second letter. What would it be? Uh, what matches up with what letter? That'd be E. B and E are in the same position. They have to stay in the same position. Then I said A. That's the first letter. First letter would be B. So uh, A and D match up. And then finally C would match up with F. So it doesn't matter where it's sitting, just as long as uh, A and D are in the same position, B and E are in the same position, and C and F are in the same position, you would be safe. Okay, let's keep going. CPCTC, that is very important. You're going to have to know what that stands for. C is uh, corresponding parts. of congruent triangles are congruent. So what we're saying is, if two triangles are equal, all of its parts are equal. So we have three angles, so if these two triangles are equal, then these three angles equal these three angles, and these three sides equal these three sides. That's what that means. So if the, if the triangles are equal, then all of its parts are equal. Okay, let's do some examples. So this right here, this sentence is saying, so we have angle J, angle K, and angle L. They would be congruent. So that's an equal with the squiggly above it. Now they gave us an angle, we have to give it back as an angle. J matches up with P. K matches up with Q, and L matches up with R. Now, what if I said KK, KL, and LJ? What would those be congruent to? If I said JK, that's the first and second letter. What's the first and second letter? That'd be QQ. Now, because of the squiggly little symbol, if I said that the answer was QP, I would be wrong. That is incorrect. The squiggly means that J will always be in the same position as P. K would always be in the same position as Q. Very important. So KL matches up with QR. And LJ, that's the third and first. So what's the third and first? That would be RP. Okay, so now um, we're going to go ahead and do this one. Now there's a typo right here. Okay, so... Uh, Uh, this is supposed to be uh, K. Uh, this is supposed to be K L J. So that's a typo. Sorry about that. All right. So they gave me a triangle. I have to give it back as a triangle. So K matched up with Q. L is the third letter that matches up with R, and J matches up with 
Hmm. All right, so I think you guys have the main idea on that one. So let's go ahead and do uh, some more examples. So if I said angle W, angle X, and angle Y, I want you to tell me what that's congruent to. And if I said um, EF, um, GF, and GE, I want you to tell me those. And remember, order does matter. And then finally this. So you're going to pause the video and bust those out. So go ahead and solve those real quick. And let's see if you guys get the right answer. And push play when you're ready. Okay, you should have paused. So let's see what you got. W would match up with E. And we have to put an angle symbol there. X would match up with F. Make sure you put the little angle symbol there. Y would match up with G. Over here, EF, that's first and second. First and second, that'd be WX. GF, that would be YX. And GE would be YW. Okay, and then if I said YWX, Y matches up with G. W matches up with E. And X matches up with F. All right. Okay, now that you have that, Let's go ahead and scroll down to this one, number three. So I want you guys to do number three, but I'll get you started a little bit. All right, on number three, first of all, uh, this is the most important part right here. You can totally ignore the picture. The picture is not helping you. This is the most important part. So you're going to match up the letters. But more importantly, if they give you a line on the top, you have to give it back with a line on top. If they give you an angle symbol, you have to give it back with an angle symbol. And if you get a triangle symbol, you have to give it back with a triangle symbol. So everyone should pause the video and give this a try. And then when you're done, um, push play. All right, you should uh, go ahead and give that a try. And let's see if you guys got the right answer. So here are the answers for that. Make sure you have all the correct lines. Make sure you have all the correct angles. Make sure you have all the correct triangles. And that was that. Okay, so now that you did that, the last thing you should do um, is practice page six and seven. So go back to page six, go back to page seven, and finish those problems. So hopefully you guys, that helped you out. Have a great and wonderful day.